Welcome to Baylor Scott & White Health Radiation Oncology. Radiation Oncology is just one of the many services we offer to our community and patients for comprehensive cancer care. In this video, we'll walk you through the multi-step process of radiation therapy, meet the team members involved in your care, and explain what you can expect at Baylor Scott & White Health. You will also see how Baylor Scott & White uses evidence-based medicine, an innovative technology coupled with a deep compassion, a healing environment, and a calling to serve to be the most trusted name in giving safe and quality health care. I'm a radiation oncologist with Baylor Scott & White Health, and we use radiation treatment in this facility to treat cancer, uh, which is kind of like surgery, uh, and it's a local treatment that affects just the area that you aim it at. Uh, the advantage is that we can do, in many cases, a treatment that results in the same outcome for cancer control without the invasive aspect of the surgery. So it's, it's much less risky in the end. As the radiation nurse, I'm the very first person that the patient and their family meets. So I escort them to the exam room have the uh, patients sit in the table, family um, are allowed to stay in the room. The importance of having family or friends coming to the appointment with the patient is that they are able to absorb and retain more information than the patient can. Also having family and friends there at the appointment provides emotional support for the patient. I do my vital signs, which includes blood pressure, we take their temperature, and look at heart rate and oxygen level also rate their pain, because um, if they're having pain issues, I want to be sure that I address that and get appropriate medications if needed. Then I enter the history. But my job as a nurse is to assess that patient head to toe, physically and mentally, so that I can give my radiation oncologist a great report so that he can go in to the room before talking with the patient, feeling confident that he knows their whole history. Once a patient decides uh, that they want to embark on a, a radiation course, the next step will be to plan that. And that first experience calls for a CT scan that allows us to map uh, and design a treatment that focuses just on where the area at risk is. We take them into the CT room. We lay them on the table. We make uh, certain types of immobilization devices appropriate for their treatment. We will make uh, vac bags. What they are is they're a fancy bag that we can pump up to an air hose um, and then suck all the, the air out of it and form the bag around the patient's body. And this allows us to get them back in the same position each and every day for treatment. We do a CT scan for that setup because they will be in that setup every day for the radiation treatment. Once we do the scan, the doctors uh, will approve the setup. We'll make a few marks on them with the Sharpie marker and we'll put some stickers over them. They will have to keep these stickers until they come back to us for their first radiation treatment. After the CT scan, the, it will, the information will be sent by a fiber optic link to the computer system in the treatment planning area where I work with a dosimetrist and a physicist to map this target of radiation that we want to cover for risk and then do whatever we can to minimize radiation exposure to surrounding normal tissues like lung, heart, spinal cord, whatever the area of concern is. My part of the treatment process of the patient is to design the radiation treatment from the CT images that came from the simulation. The doctor draws in the treatment area that he wants to be treated and the dose delivered to and then there's critical organs, other organs in that area that need to be looked at and watched so that the dose is either a safe dose or not treated at all. So I design how the machine is going to go around and treat that area and I'm very cautious about making sure that the dose only goes where it needs to go. Then I get the doctor to review what I designed. From there I program the treatment machine, tell the therapist how to line the patient up and we do all the necessary testing to make sure that it's safe before we deliver that to the patient. So it can take anywhere from a couple days to a week to plan 
the medical physics responsibility is to make sure that the linear accelerator is calibrated with national standards to deliver the dose to the patient. Uh, also, to make sure that the plan that has been developed by the radiation oncologist and the dosimetrist uh, meets national standards and is a responsibility to check that prior treatment. Oftentimes, radiation treatments last for a very long time, sometimes two to three months, where they have to come in every day, Monday through Friday, for two or three months. So transportation is often problematic for especially our elderly patients. So I do look for other resources to help, to help them meet that. Another barrier that we have in this area is copays. So I do help find resources to help with the burden of copayments and a lot of the expensive medications that go along with cancer treatment. I provide extensive information on the cancers that we treat here and the information is approved by our physicians. Other resources that are available, we do have some support groups available here. I do connect them with those and also we have a few patients that um, have told us that they are available for phone discussions for new patients just to help with that anxiety. The patient will arrive here at the center uh, we will bring them back, we'll get them changed in the appropriate uh, gowns that they will need for the procedure. We will go ahead and bring them into the room, set them up on the table, um, and from there we'll kind of explain everything to them, what we're going to be doing. So once we set the patient up on the table and on their marks, uh, of course we have to step out of the room because we can't get the daily radiation that we deliver. Uh, so we let them know that we, they are going to be by themselves in the room, but we have cameras on them at all times. We have microphones on them. They can always talk to us and we can talk back if they ever need us. So when the patient's on the table, most of the time they are facing up um, so they can see uh, all around them. It doesn't hurt. It's almost like taking just like a normal x-ray. Uh, they might hear the machine on, maybe uh, chirping a little bit, but other than that, you, they can't feel a thing. Their very first day when they come to us will probably be about 30 minutes. Um, every day after that, it will be a lot shorter, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes time frame. So once the machine turns off, there is no longer any kind of radioactivity. So they're more than welcome to go home, spend time with their grandbabies, their children, and their family members. The patient experience, once they start radiation, uh, will be checking uh, every day what's happened on treatment delivery on the linear accelerator. There's a method of imaging uh, that we have uh, on the linear accelerator here that amounts to a CT scan uh, picture right before the technologists treat so that we can be sure that the target that we set up to plan is duplicated each day. So once the patients have treatment, I do see them once a week. I reiterate the importance to the patients of making sure that they call me with any questions, concerns, additional educational needs. The whole goal of this is to get that person across the finish line without missing any uh, radiation treatments because if, if you miss treatments, it compromises the outcome. So once a patient has finished their treatment, I give them a written discharge plan also give them a survivorship care plan and on that care plan it's going to list common side effects that you can still experience even after your treatment is done. It also has follow-up appointments that the patient should make. I also handle the survivorship so what that means is that when a patient is finished with treatment in one month they'll get a follow-up call because we also want to be sure that even though they are finished with radiation they're still taking care of their whole body. My experience here at Baylor was just fabulous. Um, all from the therapist to the nurses to the radiation oncologist, they're very helpful and um, any questions that I had um, they addressed them you know right away. Nobody wants to hear you've got cancer. And I don't think I ever heard that word the whole time I was here. I said on the building outside, but I don't think I ever heard it in there. The process doesn't take very long at all, maybe a couple of minutes. 
and they'll put on any music that you want to listen to to relax you. It's, it's not that difficult. Come in, lay down for 15 minutes, which is all it takes, and uh, you're on your way again. And I've found that the folks here are uh, very flexible. You know, they try to help you out. They know you're going, what you're going through, and that makes it that, that much better. You have just seen the multiple steps involved in delivering safe and quality radiation therapy. There are many people and steps involved in your care, and it is important to maintain an open dialogue with your medical team so they can offer the best care for you. There are multiple Baylor Scott & White Health Radiation Therapy Centers located throughout Texas, so please visit our website or ask our team members to find a provider and location near you. We hope this video has been helpful. We at Baylor Scott & White Health look forward to serving you, and thank you for trusting us with your care.